Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. This morning we're talking about joy to the world. Like that old song that we sang this here a minute ago. Joy to the world, amen. Jesus has come. What a blessing. Think about that for a minute. Like I said, people were waiting for a Savior and then He finally came. Amen. We can all receive that joy as well this morning. He's coming back again. Amen. Are you waiting for Him? I hope you are. Yes. Nevertheless, I think we all need a little joy this morning. Don't you? Doesn't it feel good to laugh? Doesn't it feel good to smile? Yeah. It's a lot better than to frank, right? <laughs> to smile, to laugh. That feels a whole lot better than being upset, and frowning, being mad. If you had the choice to choose, what would you pick this morning? Smile. Probably to smile or feel joyful, right? To be happy this morning, right? Most of us would choose that. Well, I wanted to share a little funny thing that happened this morning. Miss Cheryl came in and she said, hey, DJ, you look good this morning. He's wearing his little suit in case you haven't seen it. And he said, uh, well, you look suspicious. <laughs> How hilarious. He just learned that word, and that's what he wanted to say this morning. Well, you look suspicious. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The things kids say, right? You know? He's just now learning a new word, and he's going to use it any chance he gets, right? Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Lord, for a little joy this morning. He told me my wings were uh, not as awesome as his, but awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got his suit on, and he's also got his little camo boots, too. And he wanted to wear his Batman Santa hat, but I told him no. Right? That's a little too clashy. <laughs> Nevertheless, maybe we need to pray for a little joy. Amen? Because the devil will try to steal it from you. He sure will. He'll give every chance he can to try to take your joy from you. But you know what? I want to encourage you with something right now. Joy is a constant. I want you to think about that for a second. Joy is a constant. Now, we don't always walk in that joy, but it is a constant. Now, we think of happiness. We, want, we all want happiness and everything, but happiness is based on happenstance, which is happenings that happen to you. So happiness can come and go. But joy is a constant. Do you know why? It's because of the Holy Spirit, folks. That is one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and that means that it is ever-present within you. If you have the Holy Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit this morning, you can say, Lord, help me to walk in the fruit of joy. The devil's trying to steal my joy this morning. The devil's sending obstacles my way. The devil wants me to be upset. The devil wants me to be mad. He wants me frowning. He wants me down. But you want me lifted up. Amen? Amen. So lift me up. Lift my spirits this morning. Help me to find some joy right now. And part of that, folks, is changing your mindset. The majority of having joy this morning is you choosing it. Can you believe it? You have a choice right now to choose joy. Do you want to choose it or do you want to choose being upset? You want to choose joy or do you want to choose being mad? You have that choice, folks. And the devil's wanting to give you the negative choice. But God says, I have given you joy. Walk in it. Amen? Amen. Receive the joy this morning. Look at the little things like what DJ said and laugh. Amen? Look at the little, because humor is all around us. Amen? Humor is all around us, but you have to look at it and receive it this morning. Amen? Thank you, Lord. I want to give you a little funny joke that I came across. This man came up to this televangelist and asked him for prayer. He said, I need help with my hearing. So the televangelist laid his hand on him and was trying to shove him down as hard as he could. And, Lord, bring hearing to him. Help him hear. Help him. Shoving him, trying to shove him down. And the, and the televangelist said, how's your hearing? He said, I don't know. It doesn't happen until Tuesday at the courthouse. <laughs> I thought that was...
was so funny. Oh my goodness. I think anybody that has seen that one thought that was funny. I wanted to share that with y'all this morning. Give you a little joy. Amen? But even if that doesn't make you laugh this morning, don't worry about that. The joy is already in there. Just tap into it, folks. Just choose joy this morning. I'm going to be happy this morning. I'm going to be joyful this morning. I'm going to put a smile on my face. Amen? I'm just happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Anybody else receive that as well? I'm just happy to be here. Amen? I may barely be here, right? I may be, I may maybe crippled myself in here, but I'm here. And you might be feeling that as well. You might have had a lot of aches and pains this morning. It might have been hard for you to get here, but you're here. Receive that blessing this morning. Let's go ahead and get into the Word. Luke 1.44 For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded into my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Now what was happening here is Mary was coming to her cousin and she had a baby inside, which was John the Baptist, and Mary had Jesus inside. Well, guess what? That little baby leaped for joy inside. Amen? Amen. Leaped for joy inside. And it was from the presence of Jesus. I want to get, get that through our heads this morning. The presence of Jesus brings joy. Amen? Amen. We have Jesus' presence with us this morning. Where two are gathered in His name, He is there also. Receive the joy of His presence this morning. Receive the joy of Him in your life. Amen? Amen. Luke 2, 8-12 through 12. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over the flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings, or good news, of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, the Messiah. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. We all know the story. Amen? But the angel said, I bring you good news, folks. Don't be afraid. And I want to encourage you with those same words this morning. Don't be afraid. There's a lot of craziness going on in the world right now. A lot of uncertainty. A lot of wars and rumors of wars. A lot of fear of pestilence, a lot of fear of famine, a lot of fear of the economy, you know, people in, in, in leadership that we don't want, or whoever. There was a lot of negatives. And if we get to fearing, it will stifle our joy. But don't be afraid, folks, because Jesus is here. Amen? Amen. He brings the joy. Take joy in that this morning. He is a Savior still. Amen? He was a Savior born, born to this world. He has saved us from our sin, but yet He is still a Savior. He is still your Savior. Amen? Amen. Do you need His help this morning? Yes. I think we all can agree. <laughs> I need your help, Lord. Ask Him. Amen? And trust Him. He will still be your Savior. He's the answer to all your problems. Amen? He is the answer. Call out to Him this morning if you need His help because He is readily available. Amen? Amen. Matthew 2, 1-12 through 12. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah, Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is He who has been born King of the Jews? For we have seen His star in the east, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, 
But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, and not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Now what had happened was Herod was wanting to kill Jesus. Matter of fact, he went out and he murdered all the babies up until two years old. That's how evil he was. He wanted to wipe him out because he didn't want somebody taking his throne. Right? We all know the end to Herod anyway. He ended up dying anyway. Nevertheless, these wise men sought Jesus. And when they found him, they had great joy. Amen. Wise men still seek him to this day. If you are wise, you will search after Jesus, folks, until you get a hold of him. And then when you get him, receive that joy. Amen. Amen. Receive that joy as well. Thank you, Lord. John 15, 9 through 12. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Folks, I want to give you a, a secret here. If you want to know how to have joy, follow His commands, folks. Follow His commands. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. He wants us to have joy this morning. And He wants us to have fullness of joy. But the only way we're going to get that is if we're obedient in His Word. That's the only way. You have to choose to be obedient to His Word. And then you will have joy in your life, folks. Sometimes the reasons why we don't have joy is because we're not fully walking in the ways of the Lord. We are not truly loving Him and showing our love to Him by obedience. And then He goes on to say that you love one another as I have loved you. Another way that we don't have joy is when we don't show love to one another. When we don't have love for one another, then we can. Then that's when our joy is full, folks, is when we truly have love for our fellow man. Amen? When we have love. Who's our neighbor? Everybody. Amen? Even your enemies, right? Anybody have an enemy this morning? Hopefully not. There might be some folks out there who think we're their enemy, but we're not. Amen? True Christians shouldn't have enemies. You should pray for your enemies. Amen? You should do good for your enemies. You should show love for everyone. And then you will truly have joy. When you hold on to hatred, where's room for joy? Because you will be consumed by that hate. You will be consumed and there will be no place for joy. But when you let go of all that negative, you will receive a peace. You also receive joy at the same time. There are several places in the Bible where you see peace and joy interconnected. Amen? Anybody want peace and joy this morning? Oh, yeah. Show love to everybody. Let go of hate. Let go of animosity. Let go of grudges. Let go of those frustrations that you've been hanging on to for years. Let it go. And just have peace and joy this morning. They're so much better, amen? amen. So much better. John 16, 20 through 22. Most assuredly I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. 
and you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. Any mothers out there know what I'm talking about? <laughs> but as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remains that she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Like the pain just kind of subsides. Amen? Amen. You got the baby now. You're too focused on that. But I will see you again and your heart will rejoice and your joy no one will take from you. Amen? Amen? Receive that this morning. Don't let the devil try to steal your joy. Say, no, that's my joy. I have the joy of the Lord this morning. Joy to the world. Jesus has come. Amen? He's come into my life and I receive that and I'm going to make that a reality. Amen? John 16, 24. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, you will receive that your joy may be full. Ask. Amen? You ask and receive not. Right? You haven't asked. Maybe you need to ask for some things. You need some help in your life? Ask Him. He says to do this so that your joy may be full. Amen? Amen. Need some help? Call on the name of Jesus. Like I said, He's still a Savior. Amen? Amen? John 17, verse 13. But now I come to you in these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Amen? Has Jesus spoken into your life? I pray He has. I pray He does this morning. As you hear these words, I pray that He speaks to you in your very spirits, in your very souls this morning, and that you receive the fulfillment of that joy in your life. Amen? Acts 2, 25-28 For David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for He is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoiced, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Amen? We have that to look forward to as well. In His presence, we will have fullness of joy. Anybody thankful for that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Sometimes we got to praise Him, though. As He says, and my tongue was glad. you got to make yourself glad sometimes, and you got to speak life, folks. Yeah, we got some situations that we all have to deal with, some negativities, but we have to accept joy and speak life. Maybe speak some joy, amen, into your situation. Lord, let it be so for all of us. Acts 13, 52. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the joy right now. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, folks. Because as I said, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is good and joy is one of them. Amen? Let's look at that. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And against such, there is no law. Amen? Amen? Let that fruit be ever present in your life. You got the Holy Spirit? I hope so, folks. Because if you do, you have all of these at your disposal. And one of them is that joy. Tap into that this morning. Eat of that good fruit of the Spirit. Joy. Thank you, Lord. Acts 20 and 24. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy. And the ministry which I have received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Amen? Amen. So that we finish this race that we're all in with joy. Amen? That we finish the race. Has anybody ever run a race before? That doesn't look like anybody. I think we're over in here, isn't it? Chris, my, oh, okay, several of you then. Y'all ran races? That's awesome. I've ran a race before, and I'll tell y'all about that a little bit right now. I ran this race, and I had no thought that I was going to win. 
No thought in the world. Everybody thought I was going to lose. Uh, matter of fact, my coach even said, you're just wanting to miss. You're just wanting to miss practice. I was in baseball as well. And that was true. I did. I just wanted to miss practice. I wanted to go and just be at an event all day. I got to miss school. It was, you know, as, as a kid, you know, you're thinking, hey, yeah, this is a good thing. So I got there. I got to the race. And I didn't know nothing about it. I hadn't been practicing. I didn't do anything. I just said, hey, I'm going to just take a lap, man. It was just one lap around. That was the easiest thing in the world to me. I can just jog this thing if I want to. And I get up there, and I didn't know anything about the structure of a race. I didn't know anything. I didn't know any of the details. But they put me in the front. And I thought, hey, man, I got to lead. All these other people were staggered behind me. I think, hey, are you going to put me in the front? I said, I'm about to run this thing as hard as I possibly can. And sure enough, I did. I ran as fast as I possibly could. I mean, I'm telling you, I ran faster than I ever thought I could. And I was just running. And finally, on that, last, that third corner, that's whenever it really got the bear jumps on your back. Anybody that runs, you know what I'm talking about. The bear jumped on my back. But I gave that sucker a piggyback ride all the way to the finish line. And, I, and my brother was in the stands, and, and he told me later, he's like, oh, that bear's going to get him. That bear's he's about to give up. He's about to quit. And, man, I'm going to tell you, I just kept on trucking. And guess what, folks? I got first. And there were several heats after me as well, two or three after me. And I got first out of everybody. But do you want to know what? I had so much joy at the end of that thing. I was, I was so smiling, I, and people were coming up saying, man, good job, you know. I was the biggest guy in the whole race. All these other guys were about this big and real scrawny, you know. They had been practicing, training for this event, and I just get out there, I'm just like, yeah, one lap around, let me drive, you know. And I got first. That's what God can do for us in our lives, though. He can give you such joy in a situation like that where all hope seems like you, everything's against you. You ain't going to do good. You're not going to finish. I, I didn't even know if I'd finish. And the beautiful thing about that is this, that we're all in a race, folks. This whole life is a race. Receive joy right now. God might just get you in the front. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 51, verse 12. <clears throat> Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. We need to be upheld by the Lord this morning. Amen? He is generous. He's good. Has He blessed you in your life, folks? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Think about that and be joyful. God blesses me. God loves me. Amen? Let that put a smile on your face this morning. And restore to me the joy of your salvation. You're saved this morning. If you don't have a reason to be joyful about anything else, be joyful that you're saved right now. Amen. That your eternity is secure in His hands and you've got a place in heaven. Amen? Amen? He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Matter of fact, He calls it a mansion. you got rewards. you got a mansion. You're going to be living with God for eternity. He's going to wipe away every tear. Matter of fact, the bad things that come, won't even come to your mind no more. Be joyful this morning. Amen. We have a reason. Restore to me that thought of that salvation, Lord, because in that there is joy. Amen. Amen. 1 Peter 1, 8-9 through nine. Whom having not seen you love, talking about Jesus, though now you do not see Him, yet believe Him, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith the salvation of your souls. We haven't seen Jesus a day in our lives, but yet we know Him. Amen? Amen. Let that be joyful to you this morning. Let that bring a joy that is inexpressible to you and rejoice. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord, for that salvation. 1 Peter 4.13 But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings that when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. He says, rejoice that you partake in Christ's sufferings. Anybody suffering this morning? Anybody got some aches and pains? Rejoice, folks. You partake in His suffering as well. Rejoice. That's something we don't think about doing. We don't rejoice in our tribulation too much. 
right? But if once you've really perfected it, you can rejoice in any circumstance. Amen? You can rejoice in everything. And if you've got to think of it that way, I partake in His sufferings. Amen? Rejoice this morning. Jude 24, verse 25. Now to Him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen? Amen. Before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy. He is able to present you faultless. He is the one who helps you and keeps you from stumbling. The devil wants you to stumble. He, wants you to, he puts all these stumbling blocks and obstacles before you. And as we think about a race again, sometimes there's a race of hurdles. Anybody ever seen that before? you got to jump over hurdles. The devil puts hurdles in front of you to try to get you tripped up. you never seen somebody get tripped up on them hurdles? They try to jump over it and they snag that foot on there. Sometimes the devil puts up hurdles in front of us. He wants to get us tripped up. He wants us stumbling. He wants us falling down and scuffing our knee and hurting ourselves. He wants us messed up and tripped up in sin. He wants us to do that. He wants us to fail. He doesn't want us to finish our race. And He sure don't want us to finish with joy on our face. Right? He wants us to come into heaven with a scowl on our face. Do you have a scowl on your face? Get that scowl off your face and put a smile on there. Amen? We are going to finish this race with joy. Amen? And even if there's hurdles in front of me, guess what? I'm hurdling over them things. I'm going to jump as high as I can and I'm going to jump over them. Amen? Amen. And He's the one that keeps you from stumbling. Pray for the Lord's help this morning. If you know you got a stumbling block in your life, if you know there's something that's tripping you up, pray for His help. He's still a Savior. Amen? Our final scripture this morning. Matthew 25 and 21. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. I love that. Amen? Amen. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Guess what? You don't have to wait till you get to heaven to enter in that joy, folks. Enter into it right now. We need some joy in our life. We need that joy because this life is pretty tough. Right? It's tough all around. And I hear from all of y'all about the struggles you deal with. I hear from all. I know even if you hadn't told me, I still see it. I know what's going on. Guess what? I struggle too. And if I didn't have joy in my life, I couldn't look at some of these things and laugh. Some of the stuff that I deal with, I sit back and laugh, folks. It's so it's so crazy, it's so bad, I just have to sit back and laugh, amen? And it makes me feel better. It does. you got to have a sense of humor about some things, folks. It'll make you feel better. It can turn your whole life around. You walk around with a smile on your face, man, it feels good. I can even rejoice in my tribulation. I can even still have a smile when it's all crazy all around me. I can still walk around smiling, whistling, and singing. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Get a hold of this, folks. I guarantee you'll change your life. Amen? And if you need a Savior this morning, He still is. And He'll help you in your situation. You need somebody to help keep you from stumbling? He'll be that guy. He'll show you the way. He'll say, hey, watch out for that obstacle right there. Watch out for that sin. Watch out for that booby trap. Watch out for that hurdle. Watch out for that stumbling block, whatever you want to call it. The devil's putting them in your way. But finish this race with joy on your face. Amen? Because He's there for you. And He'll help you along the way. That our joy may be full. We've got to obey His commands. We've got to love one another. Amen? Do you want your joy to be full this morning? Do those two things. Watch what happens. Watch what happens in your life. See, see God move. Not something that you hear about. 
that happens to other people. But you do those two things and you watch what God really does to change your life. You're going to have some fullness of joy, folks. You know how I know? He did it for me. Amen? He did it for me. And I trust He'll do it for you too, folks.